a tribute to Girish, uh, one of the greatest playwrights of our country. Uh, we've all benefited from his plays. We've acted in them. We've known them, studied them. And therefore, we thought we'd do uh, some brief excerpts from some of his plays that were accessible to us. The idea was Suhela's, and I'm speaking on her behalf. She refuses to speak. But before we commence, we'd also like to mention that another person to whom uh, we owe a lot in terms of theater and programs, cultural programs in Delhi, passed away this morning. And uh, this was Premala Ghosh, who was director of programs at IIC. So I think it's only fitting if we just stand for a few moments in silence in her memory. The yard in front of the Chief Court of Justice in Delhi. A crowd of citizens, mostly Muslims, with a few Hindus here and there. God, what is this country coming to? What are you worried about, Grandmother? The country is in perfectly safe hands. Safer than any you've seen before. I don't know. I've been alive a long time, seen many sultans, but I never thought I would live to see a thing like this. Your days are over, old woman. What's the use of sultans who didn't allow a subject within a mile's distance? This king now, he isn't afraid to be human. But does he have to make such a fuss about being human, announce his mistakes to the whole world, invite the entire capital, and get kicked by an infidel too? It's an insult to Islam. <laughs> That's good. Insult to Islam. So you want to teach him Islam, do you? Tell me, how often did you pray before he came to the throne? That isn't the point. That's precisely the point. Not even once a week, I bet. Now you pray five times a day because that's the law. And if you break it, you'll have the officers on your neck. Can you mention one earlier sultan in whose time people read the Quran in the streets like now? Just one. What's the use? One must act according to. All this about the Hindus not paying the jazia tax. That's against the Quran, you know. Amolvi told me that. No, no. Don't look at me when you say that. We didn't want an exemption. Look. When a sultan kicks me in the teeth and says, pay up, you Hindu dog, I'm happy. I know I'm safe. But the moment a man comes along and says, I know you're a Hindu, but you're also a human being, well, that makes me nervous. <laughs> Ungrateful wretch. <laughs> but this wretch is our best friend, Jamal. Beware of the Hindu who embraces you. Before you know what, he'll turn Islam into another caste and call the prophet an incarnation of his god. Attention, attention. In the name of Allah, it is hereby announced that Vishnu Prasad, a Brahmin of Shiknar, had filed a suit against his merciful majesty that his land had been seized illegally by the officers of the state and that he should be given just compensation for the loss of the land and the privation resulting therefrom. The qazi e mumalik having considered this matter carefully and in full detail, has declared, has declared that the Brahmin's claim is just. <laughs> that the Brahmin's claim is just and that His Merciful Majesty is guilty of illegal appropriation of land. The qazi e mumalik has further declared that in return for the land and in compensation of the privation resulting from its loss, the said Vishnu Prasad should receive a grant of 500 silver dinars from the state <laughs> treasury. <laughs> His merciful majesty has accepted the decision of the qazi e mumalik as just. And in addition to the grant of 500 silver dinars, has offered the said Vishnu Prasad a post in the civil service to ensure him a regular and adequate income. What folly is this? May heaven guide us, Sultan. I don't believe a word of it. There's something more to this. That much is obvious. Attention, attention. The warrior in the path of God, the defender of the word of the prophet, 
the friend of the Khalif, the just, his merciful majesty, Sultan Muhammad Tughlaq. Victory, Victory, to, the Victory king. to the king. Victory to the king. My beloved people, you have heard the judgment of the Qazi and seen for yourselves how justice works in my kingdom. Without any consideration of might or weakness, religion or creed. May this moment burn bright and light up our path towards greater justice, equality, progress and peace. Not just peace, but a more purposeful life. And to achieve this end, I am taking a new step in which I hope I shall have your support and cooperation. Later this year, the capital of my empire will be moved from Delhi to Dolatabad. Hey. Here. <laughs> your surprise is natural. But I beg you to realize that this is no mad whim of a tyrant. My ministers and I took this decision after careful thought and discussion. My empire is now large and embraces the south, and I need a capital which is at its heart. <laughs> Delhi is too near the border, and as you well know, its peace is never free from the fear of invaders. But for me, the most important factor is that Dolatabad is a city of the Hindus. And as the capital, it will symbolize the bond between Muslims and Hindus, which I wish to develop and strengthen in my kingdom. I invite you all to accompany me to Dolatabad. This is only an invitation, not an order. Only those who have faith in me may come with me. With their help, I shall build an empire which shall be the envy of the world. 